What is going on guys, DBG here and in this video we are going to be talk or doing another tier list in NBA 2K21 my team. And lads, I'm telling you guys right now this is the worst position in the game. This is the worst position in the game and it's not, I'm just going to say it's not even particularly close. It is not even particularly close. The small, this is the best small forwards. The small forward position sucks. We have to literally put in Wiggins. And we've got Ruby Andrew Wiggins in here. Like, that is how weak this position is. It is awful. It is horrendous. I had no idea it was this bad. Like, I knew it wasn't good. Don't get me wrong. I knew the position wasn't good. But I didn't think it was this bad. Basically, all the best power forward or the small forwards that exist, like Kawhi. Um, Kawhi's a two guard. Malik Sealy's a two guard. Um, if you're looking at Kevin Durant's power forward. Larry Bird power forward, LeBron James power forward, Paul George power forward. All the good small forwards are either two guards or power forwards. None of them are small forwards. So um, just a heads up, there is going to be a lot of not great players here on this list. And they might be a lot higher on tiers. But you, it's very rare. Very rare you see a small forward anymore. Because they're all so bad. They're all absolutely shocking. So anyway, now we are going... But before we actually we get onto it, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We're trying to get 250,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Right now we are about seven and a half thousand off with 26 days to go. So let's see if we could somehow hit 243k by tomorrow. That would be absolutely, absolutely insane. The support in the channel, by the way, has been absolutely crazy. So a huge, huge thank you, huge thank you to everyone that has been supporting me throughout the years, and also a huge thank you to everyone that has come on all 10,000 nearly of you guys that have come on board in the last month. So anyway, yeah. Now we are going to get on to it. So first up, Brian Russell. I mean, I don't think he's great. I'm not the biggest fan of Brian Russell in the world, but... I mean, am I wrong in saying that Brian Russell belongs in in this tier? Am I wrong in saying that? Because, again, is he in the best 20 players on this list? Maybe. He might be, but... um. I don't know, maybe A or B tier. I might have him high right now. Sean Mar oh yeah, I do. I think I have him high. I'm gonna put him B tier. Sean Marion, he's all right. I don't care what anyone says. His jumper's fine. It's not a great jumper by any means, but like you can hit shots with it. Like there are a million worse jumpers in this game, and it's on quick. I reckon Sean Marion, if he gets a release on very quick later on in the year, it could actually be a really, really quality release. But um, yeah, I'm I'm a big, big fan of the Marion card because. His defense is really good. He doesn't quite make my team anymore because, well, he came out. The Age of Heroes set just had... The Age of Zero, Heroes season just had so many great cards. And we also have a couple of good guys that small forward position... Or small forward power forward position uh, right now. And he doesn't quite go in for Chicken Man um, Jameson, who's still in my squad after all these months. Um, but he's still a really, really nice card. And he was a long grind, but I don't think he was worth getting. I also don't think he was not worth getting. So, TLC. I'm putting TLC in A tier as well. I think TLC is definitely... Um, you're putting him in the same tier as Marion. Like, some people, again, will say that... Um, I think most people would say that Marion's better than TLC. But I like the card. I like his release, especially on next gen. I think he's one of the more underrated cards in the game. Like, if you're asking me to compare likes of him and... I'm not going to say the... Um, the Opal Paul George, because that's a ridiculous question. But comparing like him and Pink Time and Paul George, I think that's, that's a legitimate question. Iguodala. I don't... He's good on defense. Iggy's good on defense. So I'm going to put him C tier. He does have his release on quick, which was more of a novelty than anything else. He's still not a good... He's still a kind of slow release. Um, But, again, he's got, obviously, the release on quick. He's a good dunker, good defender. No range extender, and he can't hold range, which is a bit of a problem. Um, He was... The third, he wasn't a good reward for going 68 and 0 back then. And again, like those, um, he's an unlimited reward. You can't even get him now. And if you missed out on him, you didn't really miss out on much. Like he was season three. By the end of season three, we already had our opals. You did not miss out on much of this this card here. I'm gonna go other Iguodala right now and put him in. He's going A for now, but he might get moved up to S, just because there's not. There really is not many good guys in this tier or in this position. Iguodala, Curry. No, I'll put Iggy in S. He can Curry slide. 
Really good defender. Great defensive animations. And if you're asking me whether or not, like, who I would use first on this list, it's obviously Iguodala. So, again, just really, really solid card. I think he's kind of... He's kind of so... I, th I thought he was so overrated when um, people first talking about him. Like, myself included, we were talking about him like he could be one of the best two guys in the game. And I don't think he's that, but... I think for his, like, for his price compared to even the other Opals, like, there's no reason he should be, like, the third cheapest Opal in the game. Same time, there's no reason Shrimp should be the second cheapest, but, like, look, it is what it is. So, Iguodala, I'm putting him in S tier. Andrew Wiggins, Ruby, I don't know why you made this list. You're, you, were, you, were, you weren't very good at the time. You're still not very good. Wiggins, S tier. Wiggins is better than Iguodala. I will stand by that one. I will stand by that take that Andrew Wiggins is better than Iguodala. I know most people disagree. I know most people would say that Iguodala is better than Wiggins. I think Wiggins is better. I think Wiggins' release is really good. I like 22. There's just something about him. Like, it's again, it's one of those ones where he shouldn't be better than, like, a Malik Seeley. But for me, he just plays better than a Malik Seeley. Um, but, again, a really, really solid card. A more than above average player in this game. And still a guy that a lot of people use in their squads whether they're tactically downgrading. Or whether they're just looking to get the best team that they can. So... Wiggins in S tier. Ingram. A tier for Ingram. Ingram's pretty decent. I don't think he's spectacular. But he's he's meh. He's fine. Like there's no other way to describe him. Like he is objectively just fine. His um shooting's really good. Can't curry. A little bit, a little bit small, but not too small. I mean, he wouldn't be my first choice. There's no reason. Like, if you're a big Ingram fan, he's good enough to use. Like, I wouldn't even put the two guard better Ingram as one of my first choices. But he's not a terrible card, and he's a weak position. So, funny enough, he's he might. In fact, I'm not sure. Is he in a higher tier for small fours than he was for two guards? Maybe, but um, it's just just how weak the position is. Or maybe he's in the same tier. No, he's same tier. He's A tier in both. Brent Barry, I'm gonna put B tier. Um, again, a lot of people are high on Brent Barry. I'm not. I don't know what it is because I like his release on Zerbiak. I just don't like it on Brent. Um, when it shouldn't be the case. But he is a decent enough release. Can't really handle the ball, but he's fast and dunks. So, I mean, if you want to say he's decent. Yeah, he is decent. He is decent. So, it's a little bit early in this video, but this video is going to be shorter. Like... Like, my other tier list at 30 minutes. If this tier list is more than 22, 23, I'd be shocked. Okay, let's put in the scrubs. Okay. You are bad. I'm gonna move these guys down tiers. I'm gonna move these guys down tiers. I'm gonna move these guys. No, I think TLC is better than Marion. I'm gonna put Marion down a tier as well. Actually, that might be harsh. Or do we move all three of these guys down? Oh, it doesn't make a difference. But um, we're getting the lower tiers. Obviously, Wiggins is there. Jeremy Grant. I don't think Jeremy Grant is as good as either of these guys. I'm going to put him in D tier. Um, Paul Pierce. E tier. Pierce is really... Pierce was great. Pierce was the best card in the game when he came out. I don't care what anyone says. Like People talk about Allen Houston. Um, I had both of them. And, like, when Pierce first came out, I'll say it. I was in the top 10 players in the world when this card first came out for the first couple of weeks of the game. And he was the best. And he was the best. Back in the stick god days, he was the best. And then, obviously, um, he became significantly worse when 2K nerfed the stick. Which, um, when 2K nerfed the stick, which basically meant that um, the stick gods like myself got our stars completely nerfed. But um, he was even crazy. Even, like back in triple trout online when nobody could score nobody was um able to play triple trout online no one was scoring P used to use just a painted simulator i used to shoot step back fadeaway threes greening them with the stick with paul pierce even after the first stick patch before they patched the difficulty of triple trash and it was crazy like um i just remember having like all the comp players or a load of comp players in my streams just watching me cook with paul pierce and they're like how do you do that <laughs> but um yeah this card a lot of good memories of this card, but he's bad. He's bad. He's maybe in worthless tier. I'm putting Hudson in worthless tier because he's 
he's an exchange and he sucks. Like, Hudson probably belongs in D tier. And that's the thing. He also costs about 200k and needs you to open packs to do. Hudson is absolutely garbage. He is a garbage man. Like, I'm telling you, he is woeful. Like, there's not even enough, there's not even enough ways to describe how bad he is. Um, and he's so expensive. So yes, he should be better, but because of how expensive he is, I'm putting him down this bottom tier. He sucks, man. He absolutely sucks. Okay, so I'm looking at the tiers, and I've definitely overrated people. I've definitely, definitely overrated those guys to start. I kind of underest overestimated how bad this tier list is. These guys are going to go down here, and I'm going to put like a Jack Marin in A tier. That's going to be like our cut our set point for A tier. It could be Jack Marin. So I might move Iguodala. I'm going to move Iguodala down to A tier. Like Jack Marin and Iguodala are quite similar. Jack Marin better release. Iguodala's got half range and a better defender. I still like Jack Marin though. Okay, Cam Reddish. B or C? He's better than these guys. He's B tier. He's B tier. Cam Reddish for his time though. Whew. Like, you could technically profit off him. Like, it was possible to profit while doing the grind for Cam Reddish. And that was the most mental thing. Like, you know, people were out, literally out here profiting uh, while getting a elite card like Cam Reddish. So, like, again, he was, he was fantastic. He was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So, um, nowadays, I mean... I don't think you can really put him higher than this, but I mean, at the time, at the time, he really was that dude. He was great at the time. So, um, yeah, he's going to beat here for now. But again, another player that has a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Cedric Maxwell, no brainer. S tier. Like, you can argue, like, there's, you can make an argument Cedric Maxwell versus Wiggins. Like, those two guys, you can have an argument who's better, but they're the two best cards in this list and it's not particularly close. I don't think you can argue anyone else except for maybe Iguodala. If you're a fan of Iguodala, is um, even in the same stratosphere as these guys. Like, it's hard. It's really hard to even argue that anyone's in the same stratosphere. So, um, yeah, Corey Brewer. I mean, his release is awful. E tier. Granger, A tier. Granger's got the length. Granger still has got really good length. I put him quite high in my um, top 100 yesterday. I think his length is elite. Like, it's kind of one of those things that people don't even... Like, people take for granted, like, just how just well he plays lanes. Like, he'll have underestimated. He's 6'9", with a 7'1 wingspan. It's incredible. Della Shrimp, S tier. The best on next gen is not even close. Like, Della Shrimp is better than... He's the best small forward on next gen. If we're talking current gen, Della Shrimp is... I mean, I still think he's A tier. I still think that that... Um, Gallinari release pushes him ahead of like some TLC and stuff. I'm telling you, Curry Slide. Curry Slide Gallo base with half blinders. If you get an inch of space, it's green every time. So, I mean, it's hard not to, uh, hard not to put him in S tier if you're, especially if you're an action player. This George Gervin, C tier. This George Gervin, D tier. Gervin's not very good. He, um... He's got Hall of Fame Showtime with no Showtime dunks. He has the bar. They get, uh, did a Baron Davis on him by just not giving him half Showtime, but also not giving him half Showtime at the same time. But not even letting him use his half Showtime. He's got moderately good length. He's got, like, range clamps and all those badges on gold. A couple of half badges. He's, he's bad, lads. He's, he's bad. There's no, uh... There's no way that I could try to make an argument that he's good. I know a lot of people did try to argue he was good because they locked him in, but I'm telling you. I'm telling you he's not good. And then you've got other George Gervin, which is like a slight downgrade in every way on this George Gervin. Gerald Wallace. I'll put Wallace in... Actually, you know what, Wiggins, you're going to go back up to S tier. Um, I'm going to put Wall um, Wallace in A tier. 
Like, he was really good for his time because he was so good on defense. But, like, since he, he came out at the very, like, on the 19th of February, I'm pretty sure. Um, and when he came out, he was one of the best at what he did. He was one of the best at what he did because he could just hit wide open shots and play defense. There wasn't that many guys at that in elite level. Now we have so many of them. Like, Wiggins plays the same defense as Jarrett Wallace. Wiggins can, like, curry Wiggins. So not Wiggins. Um, Iguodala and Wiggins. Both of them can do the same thing as what Jarrett Wallace did on defense. But they can also curry and then create their own shot. And they're just be overall better cards. So he's outdated. He was good for his time, but he's, he's simply outdated. This Yanis. I mean, the guy was. He got like a 73 three-pointer. I don't think he's as good as Sean Marion. I don't think he's as good as TLC. I, don't, I think he belongs in this tier. I know a lot of people argue that he should be higher, but I hate him. And I hated him at the time. I said it at the time, Jonathan Isaac was better than this specific Giannis. Again, people can stop. People can stop uh, with the whole I hate Giannis um, narrative that seems to be out there. No, I hate this specific Giannis. The other pink diamond Giannis is fine. Um, the Opal Giannis is good. The, and then I put the range Giannis is the best player in the game. But this Giannis, C tier, he's not good. Glenn, I mean, uh, ooh, Glenn Robinson the third. Who's going to be hot? I'm going to put Glenn Robinson and Glenn Robinson the third. I oh, know, I can't. Yeah, Glenn, this Glenn Robinson's one, got one thing. It's that he can curry. He could curry before every car could curry. He wasn't good. But this Glenn can hit shots. If you leave this Glenn wide open and give him space, it's green every time. He is another one of the chicken men out there. And man, he is just like a Cam Reddish. He was, both of them were in the draft set. They were elites. They were some of the elite cards in the game at the time. I about 70k for my Glenn. I don't even regret it. Funnily enough, you might think I definitely would regret paying 70k for Glenn Robinson. I don't. He was fantastic for a, month, for a couple of months for me. Glenn Rice. B. I was half contemplating moving him up. B. But then I'm just like, nah, he's not that. He's not been that good for me anytime I've used him. There are just a couple of times with Glenn Rice. Uh, because he's got Showtime dunks. He's got half blinders. Like, there are a few games I used him back when he came out and he just looked like the best player in the game. But um yeah, he's he's decent. Like he's decent. Um B tier I think is a completely, completely fair spot for him. On the small forward list, he probably would be C tier if it was two guards or power forwards to be honest. But yeah, B tier. Hito Turkalu. I mean I gotta put Hito in B tier, don't I? Like he's release is broken. But, like, this is the small forward position. Like, simply put. If he was any other position, he'd be in a lower tier. He didn't even make my top 100. Well, neither did, Sean, neither did any of these guys in B tier. I'm pretty sure Jack... I'm pretty sure I forgot Jack Maron in my top 100, looking back on it. But, um... Aikido Turkaloo. I don't like him. He, move, he moves on next gen. He moves on next gen. That's all I'm going to say. He moves on next gen, but you got to get used to his release just to make him passable on next gen. He sucks on current gen, so B tier. Butler, no brainer A. He's like Wiggins and Iggy, which is worse. Joe Harris. We're going to put Joe Harris in, in C tier. Joe Harrison, C tier. Got like gold clubs, gold range, go quick for a step. Got all the key badges on gold. And you know what's kind of crazy? That if Sapphire Steve Novak was a uh, small forward, not power forward, we'd be looking at like C tier probably for Sapphire Novak. <laughs> That's how weak this position is. But um, yeah, Joe Harris, he's meh. He's really meh. I've used him a couple of times uh, in Limited where you could only use Rubies, and he's actually been pretty good, but that's kind of really it. Jonathan Isaac, same tier as Giannis. I do think he's better than Giannis, though. I said it at the time, and I'll repeat it now. I be personally believe he's better than Giannis after the combo. I don't think it's by much, but I, I would rather take Isaac than Giannis. It's a close one, but I'd rather take this Isaac. Neither of them are great, but I mean, he's kind of plays similar style. 6'11", plays lanes. Bridgman. You badge up Junior. You give Junior Bridgman range. He's out, he's out here. No question about it. Should you ever lock in Junior Bridgman? No. Should you have locked him in at the time? No. Was he great at the time? Of course he was. He came out like 
those throwback moments cards came out and it was like they came at the start of season four yeah they were season four and it was like when the, the first couple of weeks of those moments cards obviously we had the really bad batch at the start with houston and kid but after that batch we started getting like ben gordon and then junior bridgeman was the lock in everyone's like these are the best cards in the game and then within like a week they were outclassed but uh yeah season four was kind of a crazy one the start to it i said the first day of season four with um with everything well just kind of changed everything to be fair i just think season four in general was the start of everything being crazy in game but um yeah kelly Ubre. i mean i don't like him that much he's fine he's objectively fine he didn't make my top 100 but i'm gonna have no he's marion level he's mar he's so similar to sean Mar it's actually not even funny how similar he is to sean marion he's like better release sean marion but um sean marion is just better stats wise he is incredibly similar to Sean Marion. And if you don't like Sean Marion, you're not going to like... If you like Sean Marion, you're going to like Kelly Oubre. So, yeah. We have got um, Oubre in here in B tier. This Kevin Durant, B tier. He moves on next gen. But again, that's like the Hedo. Those 6'10 got dribble guys. Except for Odom. It's a weird one with Odom. But um, no, nah, Kevin Durant can move and get open on next gen. He was probably... He was probably the best player in the game when Next Gen came out, to be honest. Um, him or Steph... Actually, no. With, when Fades were thinking with Steph Curry, him and Steph, though, were the two best. They were the two best Next Gen cards in the game. But Kevin Durant, he was never really great in current gen. A little bit inconsistent. Um, his release on slow isn't the greatest. Chris Middleton. B. I mean, he hits wide opens. I mean, that, that's, what you, that's what you're looking... Like, if a card can hit consistently wide open... And I mean, by consistently, I mean more consistently 99% of other players in the game. I think that puts you into B tier for me um, on this list because this position's weak. So we're going to have Mike Miller, E tier. You're fine, but bronze clamps, you're really not great. This Scotty, I like this Scotty when he first came out. The more I use him, like there is no, you cannot make any argument that this Scotty Pippen here is better than Brian Russell. You just can't. You, there's no argument to make. So, TJ Warren, he's not good. E tier. I don't think. Are there any bad cards left now? You're going to go C tier, Nick Batum, because you can't hold range. And when you're holding range, you're as, as good as a Brent Barry. Um, this LeBron James. B, I mean, he's he's okay. Like, again, that's, that's the only two letters I can. Um, I can use to describe him is like okay he's fine michael porter jr i mean you give him you clamp some up he's something but he's beat here there's always times where i i think do i put him into a tier because he does move like a kevin durant but no i don't think he's as good as these guys in a paul george is paul paul george might be the best player in b tier but it's i don't think i can objectively say this pg is better than tlc I have both of them. Both of them are equally as close to making my team. Um, maybe I bu I've definitely got biased towards this PG card because I remember getting this pink time in 2K15. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Paul Pierce, A. Hey, Pierce has got the curry slide. His release is garbage. He can't shoot in the corners in current gen and it's just so garbage on next gen. He does get hot blinders though, so like, he should be good. I use them on next gen. He's just not. He's just not like... He's not as good as Andre Iguodala, and I don't like Iguodala. Pace Diakovic. A. Yeah, Pace is, belongs in a second tier. He's a better shooter than anyone in B tier. He's like a better Chris Middleton, because again, same shot base, obviously a different upper. Rick Barry. I don't care. Like, I don't care that Onus had success with him. I don't care that people had success with him. Rick Barry is not better than uh, Timothy Lowe Cabrio or a Paul George. Like... Rick Barry is one of the weaker players in B tier. He's got like 80 lateral quickness or something. It's horrendous. He can hit wide open and he hits wide open really well. He's not it. He is not it, lads. Trust me. Um, Will Barton. A. I love Will. I really like Will Barton. I really, really like Will Barton. A lot of people have not used him. Not B, B, B. I'll put him in B. As much as I love Will Barton. 
yeah, I think I think I might have I might have went a little bit overboard by saying Will Barton is um is A tier, but he's B tier. He can curry, great release, really good dunker. He's an all around really, really good card. He's also got quite good Hall of Fame badges. And these last two guys, like considering the guys that we have, Sean Elliott and Terry Dishinger, are both S tier. Terry's still S tier at that small four position. But man, Terry the legend of Terry Dishinger will never be forgotten. Splash playing two 2,600 games before getting him, uh, before getting him, and then Terry Dishinger hitting a massive, massive shot to um, win Splash 50k. Like I played 900 games for him. It was between like four different accounts. It wasn't anywhere near what guys like Splash played, but still, I played a lot of games for Terry Dishinger. But um, yeah, an absolutely, absolutely incredible, incredible card. But at this stage in the game, he's just a bit outclassed. Sean Elliott though. He's got base 29, which is that Granger base. He can curry and he's got half or he's um, got half range. He's got half clamped. He's got basically everything you need from an elite level two guard in the game. And he's also six foot eight. He's fantastic. Like he's like if we're talking best small forwards in the game, it's probably Shrem. The best four are the best on next gen is Shrem. Then you've got Wiggins or um Cedric Maxwell either gen. Whichever one you prefer. And then after that, in my opinion, is Sean Elliott. So Elliott is number four, probably, overall. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. That is the video. This is the weakest position by far in the game. But again, we have to go through all the position tier lists. And the fact that, like, we've got Cliff Hagen, Paul Pierce from day one still on the list. It just shows how weak this position is. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. You're going to see a lot of the guys you expect to see on this list, on tomorrow's list, because they're primary power forwards. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.